Hi guys! Today I am doing a makeup tutorial on a very glamorous look and I have recently been very into this glam thing and I've realised that looking around the, the internet and looking around YouTube trying to find like a suitable nice glam look I've noticed that it's very hard to find one that actually suits very pale skin and very blue eyes because everyone who does glam makeup is basically brown eyed, brown eyed and absolutely gorgeous and as a person that has had a bit of complex for my very blue eyes um, <laughs> I get super jealous when I see all these brown girl eyed girls and they're just perfect and they're gorgeous. Today I'm trying to do a makeup tutorial that actually suits very pale skin and blue eyes, like a glam tutorial that is suitable for a person with no pigmentation at all. So after moisturising my skin I'm starting with foundation which is the foundation of the look and I'm not that fond of like the heavy super coverage look. Uh, so I am starting with the MAC Face and Body Foundation. I am going to perfect my base once uh, I've done my eyes and brows and everything, but I kind of like to start with a very light foundation and then build the coverage and then build the coverage where I need it because you don't need to cover your whole face just to be beautiful. Uh, and this is the MAC Face and Body Foundation in C1. A45? I don't know actually. <laughs> I'm new to MAC foundations and MAC skincare. So I give this a real nice shake and I am applying this with my fingers. Normally I don't apply foundation with my fingers but they are super clean and when it comes to the MAC face and body foundation it kind of changes in texture as you work it and therefore it is, for me, it is easier to work it in with my fingers. So I start in circular motions like this and then when I feel that it has changed in the texture and it feels slightly heavier, heavy, heavy, and it feels slightly heavier and more creamy rather than watery, which it feels like at the start, then I start to use like small dabbing motions. Next up I'll do my brows. I just realised how many MAC products I'm going to use in this tutorial. I'm sorry, there are plenty of drugstore options. But I am going to, for, to film in my brows, I am using the brown gel liner in Dip Down uh, Fluid Line and the <laughs> angled brush. The reason that I am using a gel liner is because I like to fill in my brows with kind of a cream product and I already had this uh, thing and instead of going to Anastasia and buying their dip brow thing I just think it's so much easier to just use a brown gel liner and be very careful with how I'm using it. What I like to do is like that I wet my brush a bit then I take a tiny bit of this and then I'm kind of dabbing this like this and I'm making kind of a bit of a square just not to get that much product onto my face because we don't want like you know square brows And I'm just brushing my brows with an old mascara brush just to kind of yeah fluff them up a bit and then I'm putting some gel onto them. I am using a brow gel that I have made myself so and I'm using an old packaging of the Grandiose Lancome Grandiose mascara so you can't buy this, I'm sorry. To perfect the line underneath my brows, I'm using the Laura Mercier Cream Smooth Foundation in Porcelain Ivory. Putting that foundation onto a Real Techniques re Detailer block Brush, I'm just following the line. And I'm just blending this out with my ring finger. I'm moving on to eyeshadow. 
So I'm prepping my eyes with a very shimmery kind of primer thing. Uh, it's the Light Reflect from Biotherm and it's in the colour gel in the colour 20 and it's a very yellowy thing. The reason for me not having finished my base yet is because it will be quite messy around my eyes so I can cover that up with makeup. The colours that I'm looking for right now is kind of greys and blacks because I think that's a really nice thing to have on your eyes uh, but I also like the ones with a tiny 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 bit of and hint of purple in them so I'm using uh, this thing from MAC please don't laugh at my very empty uh, palette and I'm lightly putting this all over then I'm using uh, this eyeshadow and it's in the shade 140 and it's from a company called Nilans Yord which is a Scandinavian brand I'm not sure if you can actually get it anywhere else I'm taking that a bit more on the outer in the outer corners my lids I'm using the same eyeshadow and running that underneath my eyes. Next I'm using a eyeshadow pigment from uh, or a eye dust from FaZe and uh, this is in the colour Storm and I really like the FaZe Stockholm uh, their pigments or their eye dusts because it's a very nice like <laughs> it's a cheaper version of the MAC of the MAC pigments and they are very nice and I, I really love them. I'm putting that onto my brush and I'm running it in the corners. This is very shiny and shimmery. And I think that one thing that we quite often miss when it comes to using black eyeshadow is that you kind of need something brown reddish as a base behind in the crease to make it look a bit more natural. I'm using this pink eyeshadow from ST Lauder and I'm not sure that you can get this palette anymore but it's in the violet underground side of the metallic and I'm sure you can get a replacement for it like this. I am going to blend it very well, believe me, because pink eyeshadow is very hard to look good in. And while I still remember, I am highlighting underneath my brows, and to do that I'm using the shimmery colour in the Anastasia uh, contouring kit. Like that. And then I'm blending in that pink. Using circular motions. And now it's hardly visible, it's just kind of a hint of pink. And here comes the exciting part, this is when I put the black into the game. So I'm using a matte black eyeshadow, putting it onto my brush. And then I'm taking a credit card, like this, and I'm using my camera as a mirror, but this is impossible. I am going to put tape on my face, I don't think that you should put tape on your face because it is harmful for the skin but right now I really need to because I can't hold up my credit card so because I am filming and I'm holding my mirror so <laughs> my hands kind of run out but uh, use a credit card not tape. So I did put the tape on my face after all I hate when beauty gurus does this because it is harmful for your eyes don't do this at home I'm doing it once never else And then I'm doing blending and then I'm going back with the black and then I'm going doing blending and then I'm going back with the black. And then I'm using another face Stockholm pigment or eye dust and this is Clarity and it's a super snowy white. In the inner corner of my eye, I'm always having kind of a nervous breakdown when I'm removing the tape or the credit card because it can look like if I'm unlucky, the eyeshadow will have gone 
down underneath the tape. We'll see. If it does, there's no problem, I'll correct it. Not on this eye. It's very sharp on that eye. What about this thing then? Yeah, and it's sharp there as well. Then, I'm, I'm really putting much effort into my eyes today, but that's kind of the key to the look. So then I'm running through, underneath my eye, I'm putting on a cold pencil. It's okay for it to look messy at this stage. Rubbing that out with a brush, a bit of a harsher brush. I'm going in with the MAC Brown Gel Liner once again, but now I'm using it as a eyeliner. And yes, my face does look messy. I Like, I can't comment enough on that it's alright that it's messy. I will correct it, but I will. <laughs> Just taking this slightly bit in, my, in the inner corner of my eye. Then I'm going in with the black gel liner from Maybelline. Now I'm just playing around, I'm having fun. Like that. And now it's time for lashes. I'm starting off with the mascara. I am using the Bourjois Push Up Mascara. And then I'm just putting a light coat onto my lashes. Now I'm going in with falsies. I'm using the Ardell lashes in 105, I think it's the Glamour lashes. Um, and this pair came with a lash applicator. And it looks like this. I'm very skeptical to these kind of products. I will try it, uh, but if it doesn't work, I'll just go on to my regular pair of tweezers. So I'm putting this, also I've already put on the glow, but I'm trying to like let it dry for a few seconds because you are supposed to. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Uh, I am skeptical. Ah, I can't see anything. Okay, no. <laughs> I get the theory, but that just doesn't work. That is my lashes put on. I'm going to cover up the glue with a bit of gel liner. Of course, it hasn't dried, so it's in, uh, invisible. But you know, it kind of shines, and I'm just going to matte it down a bit. Okay, and then I'm going in with the mascara just to blend my lashes with the false lashes. All right, now I'm finally done with my eyes and I'm going back to my base. So I'm going out in with the Bobbi Brown foundation stick and this one is in warm ivory number one. And I'm just putting this on the areas that I feel really needs some coverage, which is mainly my cheeks, my chin, not my forehead, my forehead is fine. I like that. I'm blending it in with a Real Techniques buffing brush. And then into concealer, I'm using this concealer from MAC. It is the Mineralized Concealer in NC15. I think that's the palest shade MAC's got. Putting it underneath my eyes, where I need it the most. A little bit on my, got a spot there and a there. On my chin, a bit there. Oh, that's a lot. I'm using a Clinique's foundation brush just to get it up. Trying to cover as much of the mess that I created doing the eyes.
as you can see I am very cold in my tones uh, but and trying to warm it up is not always great but since I know my own skin and what I need I can do it I'm using this bronzer from the from the body shop and it is the bronzing powder fair matte in 02 so this I think this is the lightest bronzer shade putting it on with a Real Techniques contour brush just a bit and I do this just to bronze up and I'm just like kind of running it all over just to create a bit more of color because I can kind of colors kind of tend to disappear on me quite often and then on to contouring where I'm using the Anastasia contouring kit I'm using Fawn as you can see I have been using it quite a lot taking it onto the same brush dusting it off give my hand trying to follow all of a sudden realize that I'm in a hurry so I'm like really then I'm doing a tiny bit of contouring onto my nose uh, it is a bit wide and I'm taking the same fawn dusting it using this kind of brush and I'm just moving downwards like that and then it's time for blusher when you're doing this kind of look you kind of want to skip the blusher but don't do that because you really need some colour to your cheeks. I'm using the Clinique pink blush, taking that to my brush and putting it I'm using this thing it's the MAC Mineralize Skin Skin Finish and it's in the colour Porcelain Pink. Putting it onto a brush quite a lot and then dusting off like more than half of it. <laughs> and I will kind of try to keep to this half moon shade up shape up here. And I think the only thing that could really go with this kind of look is a real nice nude so that's what I'll do so I'm putting on a lip nude like a nude lip liner uh, next I'm using my favorite nude and this is new nude and I love it it's the MAC cream sheen cream de nude cream de nude it looks like this it's the perfect one for me, maybe not the perfect nude for you, but it's for me. So I'm just putting that on. I really think this is a gorgeous nude. Okay, so I'm, powder I'm going to powder my face. I guess you know how to do that. And then I'm putting my hair extensions in and I'll be back with you. Okay guys, so this is my final look. I do think that glams look things, they do look better when you have longer hair, so that's why I put them on. Um, but yeah, this is it. I'll zoom it in for you and you'll see. But thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment down below on what kind of video you'd like to see me do next. So, bye.